Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can now have our morning worship. And please bless also our study and help that we receive new light and understanding. And help us that we become doers of your word and not hearers only. And thank you that we can come to you in every situation and need. And that you have illimitable um, opportunities for your people. And please be with us also at the rest of this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, um, this morning we're going to look at a subject that has been um, a, a difficult subject right from the beginning of this movement. Und heute Morgen wollen wir uns ein schwieriges Thema anschauen, ähm, was also für die Bewegung war das schon von Anfang an schwierig zu verstehen. Because although, and, and that subject is about the East Wind. Und dieses Thema ähm, geht um den Ostwind. And although um, we've understood it to refer to the work of radical Islam. Und obwohl wir verstanden haben, dass es sich auf das Werk des radikalen Islams bezieht. There's many uh, verses in the Bible that we just haven't understood about it. Da gibt es viele Verse in der Bibel, die wir darüber nicht verstanden haben. And in line with that, we used to understand that Ishmael was also a symbol of radical Islam. Und damit verbunden haben wir auch verstanden, dass Ismail ähm, ein Symbol war für den radikalen Islam. Okay, but we came to understand later that he's actually a, a symbol for Satan's children. Aber mm -hmm. später haben wir dann sind wir zum Verständnis gekommen, dass er ein Symbol ist für Satans Kinder. Okay, and they can represent both the threefold union and and also uh, radical Islam. Und sie können sowohl die dreifältige Union darstellen als auch den radikalen Islam. And you know the Ishmaelites are the children of the East. Und die Ismailiter sind die Kinder des Ostens. Okay, and when we go through these verses today, I want to show you that the East Wind is also the work of the threefold union. Und wenn wir da durchgehen, möchte ich euch zeigen, wie der Ostwind auch das Werk der dreifältigen Union ist. Uh, this is not a new thought. Und das ist kein neuer Gedanke. But It has been voiced in the past by uh, one or two times it, it's come up before. Aber in der Vergangenheit wurde das schon ein oder zweimal erwähnt. But with me, I always try and avoid topics of controversy unless I understand them. Aber ich versuche immer um, Themen der Kontroverse zu vermeiden, es sei denn, dass ich sie verstehe. And I, I just stick with what I know and I wait until the Lord reveals those things that we don't understand. Ich warte, um, also ich halte mich an die Dinge, die wir wissen und warte, bis der Herr diese Dinge offenbart, die wir noch nicht verstehen. But anyway, I'm going to go through some verses this morning to show that these refer to the threefold union. Aber heute morgen möchte ich durch um, ein paar Verse hindurchgehen, um zu zeigen, dass um, es die dreifältige Union ist. And we'll see as we go through this that really the east wind is representing the wrath of God. It's the punishment when, when, he, when he punishes either whether it be God's people or whether it be the, the threefold union. Und wenn wir da durchgehen, werden wir sehen, dass der Ostwind eigentlich den Zorn Gottes darstellt, also die Bestrafung, ob er jetzt Gottes Volk bestraft oder die dreifältige Union. 
Okay, let's look at it. Anyway, let's begin by going to Genesis 41. Fangen wir an, indem wir zu 1. Mose 41 gehen. And verse 1. Und Vers 1. It says, And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. And so Genesis 41, which, what is it a parallel to? Also 1. Mose 41, zu was steht das parallel? Daniel. Daniel 2, right? Daniel 2. So Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar, they're both the same entity in this sense, right? Also Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar in diesem Sinne sind beide dieselbe Macht. Okay, in Daniel 2, Nebuchadnezzar is this evil king that brings a Sunday law. In Daniel 2 is Nebuchadnezzar, dieser böse König, der ein Sonntagsgesetz bringt. Okay, and Pharaoh is also this, but they, but they both represent these kings that, although they, they do this work, they... They, they both end up doing the right thing. Right? Und Pharao eben auch, aber obwohl sie beide dieses Werk tun, am Schluss ähm, ja, enden sie dann gut. And it, this happens because in both instances, both Joseph and Daniel stand before them and tell them what's about to come. Und das right? geschieht, weil in beiden Fällen sowohl Daniel als auch Joseph, sie stehen dann vor ihnen und sie sagen ihnen was. Kurz davor ist zu geschehen. Okay, so, Vers 2. Also Vers 2. It says, And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And kine are just another word for, for cows or oxen. Also das sind eben diese Kühe oder Ochsen. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind, so Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk rank and good, and behold, seven thin ears blasted with the east wind sprung up after them, and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Okay, so two times you have this, uh, this dream, showing you the same thing in two different illustrations. Also zweimal hat man diesen Traum, und es zeigt dasselbe nur durch zwei verschiedene Darstellungen. Okay, when we go to verse 45, uh, 25, so excuse me. Dann gehen wir zu Vers 25. It says, And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Right? So, we look at our... Prophetic narrative. Und wir schauen uns diese prophetische Erzählung an. Joseph would be standing right here. Dann würde Joseph genau hier stehen. Where is he just come from? Woher ist er gerade gekommen? He came out of prison, out of the belly, right? Er ist aus dem Gefängnis, aus dem Bauch gekommen. Right, he stands before Pharaoh and he tells him what's going to shortly come to pass, right here, right? Und er steht dann vor Pharaoh und er sagt ihm, was dann hier in Kürze geschehen soll. So, and what he says is going to be seven good years, right? Und er sagt ihm dann, es werden sieben gute Jahre sein. Would that be in agreement with the time of peace? Wäre das in Übereinstimmung mit der Zeit des Friedens? 
Yes, and what did we look at yesterday? Yeah, and what have we uns gestern angeschaut? Forgotten already? What did we look at yesterday? What was the theme that we were looking at yesterday? The two the Okay, so with this is an agreement. Right? Okay, so because the, the remember the latter rain falls, but it's it's the anti-type which becomes the type, the former rain, right? Das ist der Antitypus, aber es wird dann wieder so ein Typus zum Frühregen. So is it something positive? Also ist das etwas Positives. Yes, when the, when the latter rain falls, what's, what's in your mind when the latter rain is fallen? Ja, wenn der Spätregen fällt, was kommt euch da in den Sinn? Ja, abundance, right? Abundance of fruit, harvest, all the rest of it, right? Also Überfluss, ähm, Frucht und Ernte und so weiter. So what does it say? There'll be seven good years of what? Also es sagt, es werden sieben gute Jahre von was sein? Seven good years of, of what? Ah, <laughs> the, the point was, in the illustration here, right? It says... Um, corn. Yes, corn. It's speaking about a harvest, right? Also es sagt sieben... <coughs> And the, the, the cows are eating in a, in a meadow, right? They're, they're being nourished and fat. Right? Okay, so this seven good years is in agreement with the point here that it's where the rain is falling and everything is in abundance, right? Also, these seven good years are in übereinstimmung damit das hier eben der Regen fällt und alles ist im Überfluss. Ich komme hier nicht. 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 Also er sagt ihm jetzt, was in Kürze geschehen soll, und das sind in diesen sieben guten Jahre. Und was trennt die sieben guten Jahre von den sieben Jahren der Hungersnot? In East Wind, right? In Ost Wind. So, it says there's going to be an East Wind, and then it's going to be followed by seven years of famine. Also es wird einen Ostwind geben und dann wird es gefolgt sein von sieben Jahren der Hungersnot. Is that an agreement with the time of trouble? Ist das in Übereinstimmung mit der Zeit der Trübsal? Yes, because what uh, Elijah says there will be what? Ja, weil Elia sagt, was wird es geben? There will be a famine in the land, right? Es wird eine Hungersnot im Land geben. Okay, in the story of Elijah, it's 1260, it's a one symbol, right? In the Geschichte von Elia ist es 1260, ist es ein Symbol. But we also have the 2520. What is the 2520? Ja, wir haben auch die 2520. Und was ist die 2520? Okay, seven years, but what is it? Sieben. It's a curse, right? Auch sieben Jahre, also von der Zeit, und es ist eben ein Fluch. It's a time of captivity. Es ist right? eine Zeit der Gefangenschaft. So you see that these two symbols are in agreement, and it's telling us, therefore, that this, there's something here that the east wind that brings about this change from seven good years to seven years of fun, right? Wir ja, sehen, das ist in Übereinstimmung. Und deswegen dieser Ostwind, der trennt dann eben diese sieben ähm, guten Jahre von den sieben Jahren der Hungersnot. Okay, so go to Daniel chapter 4. Gehen wir zu Daniel 4. And Sister White takes Daniel 2 and Daniel 4 and she parallels them in the book of education. Right? Und Ellen White nimmt Daniel 2 und Daniel 4 und sie setzt sie parallel mm -hmm. im Buch Erziehung. We already understand Daniel 2 is a parallel to Genesis 41. Wir verstehen schon, dass Daniel 2 eine Parallele ist zu 1. Mose 41. Therefore, Daniel 4 is also what? Deswegen ist Daniel 4 auch parallel to Genesis 41. Eine Parallele zu 1. Mose 41. Okay, so let's read verse 22. Also lesen wir Vers 22 in dem deutschen Vers 19. Okay, it is thou, O King, that are grown and become strong, 
For thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion is to the end of the earth. So Daniel, he's standing prophetically the same place as Joseph, right? Because they're both prophetically the same person, right? Also Daniel steht an demselben Ort prophetisch, so wie Joseph, weil prophetisch sind sie dieselbe Person. And he's also telling Nebuchadnezzar what's about to happen, right? Und er sagt Nebuchadnezzar auch, was da Okay, verse 23. Verse, um, 20 and whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it. What do we see here? Was können wir hier sehen? Yes, just what, what, what does it say? That's true, but what does it say there? What do we see? Das Gericht, aber was können wir dort sehen? There's an angel coming down from heaven, right? Marking the point where the destruction takes place. Right? Where would we mark that on our line? Right, right here, this, this angel, right? It's the blessing and the curse. Right? Okay, so it says, Whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one come down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it. Yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let its portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. So what's, what's to fall there for seven times? What soll dort für sieben Zeiten fallen? The, the Jew, right? Yeah, Put it there yesterday, right? Ich gestern hier hingeschrieben. Okay. So, although, although he gets cut down, he, it's, a, it's, it's a warning for the whole world, right? Also, obwohl er hier abgehauen wird, ist es eine Warnung für die ganze Welt. Okay, because they're not as guilty <laughs> yet, right? He's given them an opportunity to repent. Right? Okay, so although they get this punishment, they're not destroyed. Okay, until seven times pass over it. Seven times is seven years. Right? So the seven good years are seven years with the Jew is falling from heaven, right? Die sieben guten Jahre, das sind diese sieben Jahre, wo eben der Tau vom Himmel fällt. Okay, verse 24. Vers 24. This is the interpretation, O King, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. Now what is happening during the seven good years in Genesis 41? Was geschieht mit den sieben guten Jahren in 1. Mose 41? My question is always in relation to what we've just read, right? The what, sorry, Mark? Yeah, okay, there's, there's seven good kind. Feeding in a meadow, right? Es gibt ja sieben gute Kühe, die auf einer Weide weiden. What's Nebuchadnezzar doing? <coughs> Was macht Nebuchadnezzar? He's a cow feeding in a meadow, er right? Er ist eine Kuh, die auf einer Weide ist. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember, we just made this point that Daniel 4 is a parallel to Genesis 41, right? Und denk daran, wir haben gerade diesen Punkt gemacht, dass Daniel 4 eine Parallele ist zu 1. Mose 41. The prophets are... Subject unto the prophets, right? Propheten sind den Propheten untertan. Okay, so um, they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they can commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. So, 
right here, God's people are set up over all the kingdoms, right? Hier wird Gottes Volk über alle Könige aufgesetzt. In what sense? Gesetzt und in welchem Sinne? Meaning now that they all <laughs> They will be preaching to the whole world, right? Das bedeutet, dass sie der ganzen Welt predigen werden. Because the gospel goes here, where? Go to whom here? Zu wem geht das Evangelium mm -hmm. hier? To every missionary station in the world. It's a worldwide message, right? Für jede Missionsstation in der Welt ist es ihm eine weltweite Botschaft. And everybody gets a chance to know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom, right? Und jeder bekommt dann eine Chance zu erkennen, dass ähm, der Allerhöchste ähm, in diesem Königreich regiert. So when Putin gets punished, the whole world is going to get an opportunity to know that the Most High ruleth before they try to bring their their uh, poison upon the people of this planet, right? Und wenn Putin also bestraft wird, dann wird die Welt eine Möglichkeit erhalten, ähm, eben zu erkennen, dass Gott herrscht, bevor sie dieses Gift bringen ähm, über die ganze Welt. Okay. So, the Lord is going to rebuke their foolishness and give them an opportunity to see what, where their foolishness will end up, right, before they do it. Also der Herr wird ähm, ihnen zeigen, ähm, also ihre Torheit zeigen und ihnen zeigen, ähm, ja, wo diese Torheit endet, wenn sie bevor sie es bringen. Okay, so, go now to Ezekiel, chapter 17, verse 7. Gehen wir jetzt zu Ezekiel 17 und Vers 7. Now, this is this parable that begins with God's people being planted here by good water, right? Das ist dieses Gleichnis, das hier anfängt, wenn Gottes Volk an guten Wassern gepflanzt wird. But then it says in verse 7, Vers 7 sagt es dann, There was also another great eagle with great wings and many feathers and behold, this vine did bend her roots towards him. Who's this eagle? Wer ist dieser Adler? It's Pharaoh, right? Das ist Pharaoh. Right? They're bending their roots now towards him. Also sie neigen ihre Wurzeln jetzt zu ihm. And that is right here, right? Das ist dann hier. So we're going to read what the result of that is, right? Und dann werden wir lesen, was das Resultat davon ist. The short her branches towards him that he might water it by the furrows of her plantation. It was planted in a good soil by great waters that it might bring forth branches that it might bear fruit, that it might be a goodly vine. Say thou, thus saith the Lord God, shall it prosper? Shall he not pull up the roots thereof, and cut off the fruit thereof, that it wither? So, when it bends the roots towards Pharaoh, what's going to be the result? Also, wenn es die Wurzeln zu Pharaoh hinwendet, was wird das Resultat sein? It's going to wither, right? Es wird verdorren. Right? Is, if it withers, is that a famine? Wenn es verdorrt, ist das eine Hungersnot? Yes, right. Yeah. It shall wither in all the leaves of her spring, even without great power or many people, to pluck it up by the roots thereof. Yea, behold, being planted, shall it prosper? Shall it not utterly wither when the east wind toucheth it? It shall wither in the furrows where it grew. Right? So, who's going to touch it? Wer wird es berühren? The east wind, Der right? Ost wind. <clears throat> right? So it tells you there's good seven good years here, and then the seven years of famine are marked by this east wind that's going to bring about a famine, right? And it shows us here these seven good years, and these seven years, the bad years, are caused by this east wind. Um, uh, sorry, last wind. It's going to bring about a ah, famine. Okay, dieser Ostwind wird eben diese Hungersnot um, verursachen. Okay, and you see here in this sto story, right, when they bend their roots towards Pharaoh, the result is that they, they're going to wither when the east wind touches them, right? Und in dieser Geschichte sagt es uns, wenn sie ihre Wurzeln also zu Pharao hinbeugen, dann wird das Resultat sein, dass, diese, äh, dass sie ver werden, wenn der Ost, wenn sie berührt. Where, where do we see that taking place elsewhere in the Bible? Wo können wir das noch ähm, stattfinden sehen? 
woanders in der Bibel. Ja, yeah, the, the fig tree curses it, right? Der Feigenbaum, er verflucht ihn. Who curses it? Und wer verflucht ihn? Christ, right? Christus. So you can see here, it's the work of Christ in punishing his people, right? Können wir sehen, es ist das Werk Christi, in dem, dass er sein Volk bestraft. Where does Christ come from? Und woher kommt Christus? East. Right, as far as the east is from the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be, right? Vom Osten und wie der Osten bis zum Westen ähm, ist, so wird auch die Wiederkunft des Menschensohnes sein. Okay, so, it's, it's the work of Christ in punishing, right? That's what we see so far, right? Das, es ist also das Werk Christi, was, äh, in dem er bestraft, also das haben wir so weit gesehen. Okay, now go to Judges chapter 6. Gehen wir jetzt zu Richter, Kapitel 6. Now this was also a controversial point many years ago in this movement. Das war auch ein kontroverser Punkt vor vielen Jahren in dieser Bewegung. And people were trying to say that this was Islam right here. Und Leute right? haben versucht zu sagen, dass das hier der Islam ist. But that was just folly. Aber das war nur Torheit. Okay, Judges 6 in Vers 1. Richter 6, Vers 1. It says, in the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian. How many years? Seven, Seven years, Seven right? Years. So, so where, where do they get delivered into the hand of the enemy? On the line. At the Sunday law, right? So we go into captivity, right? So we see here it's an agreement, right? Okay, it says, And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. Now, Sister White talks about this. She talks about the righteous down through the time of persecution, the hidden the dens and the caves, right? Sie schreibt darüber, dass während dieser Zeit der Verfolgung, da haben sich die Gerechten in diesen ähm, Gruben und in Höhlen verborgen. Okay, it was the time when they were in the wilderness. Es right? war in dieser Zeit, wo sie in der Wüste waren. Okay, time of the papacy, the threefold union. Es war in der Zeit, in der Zeit des Papsttums, der dreifältigen Union. Okay, so let's see, go to verse 3. Sehen wir das jetzt? Gehen wir zu Vers 3. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, even they came up against them. What do we see? Was können wir sehen? The threefold union, right? Die dreifältige Union. And the children, the, the, who, are the, who are the children of the east here in this illustration? Which would they represent? Und in dieser Darstellung... Stellung, wer wären die Kinder des Ostens? Wen würden sie darstellen? Which of the three? Wer von den drei? I don't think so. Yeah, the, the, the great multitude is always the dragon, right? The, the, and the dragon is the Satan's children, right? Also die zehn Könige, weil diese große Menge, diese Mehrzahl ist immer ähm, ja, der Drache, also es sind Satans Kinder. Now, Islam, or radical Islam, are they a perfect representation of Satan's kingdom? Und ist der radikale Islam eine vollkommene Darstellung von Satans Königreich? Yes, that's the whole purpose of them, right? That's what they're, they're, that's who you've chosen. <laughs> He's going to give you the very thing that you've chosen, right? Ja, das ist um, ihr ganzer Zweck. Also, wenn du gewählt hast, das wird er dir dann auch geben, was du gewählt hast. Okay, and the dragon, right, is Satan, right, and it represents these children of the flesh, right? Der Drache, das ist eben Satan und es stellt also hier die Kinder des Fleisches dar. And they're likened unto the children of the east, which is the Ishmaelites. Und sie werden right? verglichen mit den Kindern des Ostens, was die Ismailiter sind. Okay, and Ishmael is a symbol of Satan, right? Ismail is a symbol for Satan. So you can see right here that the threefold union, and especially the dragon right here, is likened unto the children of the east. Also here can we see how the threefold union is erwähnt wird, and vor allem dieser Drache 
äh, wird verglichen mit den Kindern des Ostens. So you can see here that there's an agreement that this east wind here would be the three fold union that's bringing this seven years of famine, right? Deswegen können wir sehen, wie der Ostwind hier ein Symbol ist für die dreifältige Union, die diese ähm, Zeit der Hungersnot bringt. Right, Vers 4. Vers 4. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. What are they now doing? Was tun sie jetzt? What's the increase of the earth? Yeah, yes, the, the ability for the earth to bring forth fruit, right? Zerstören eben das, was die Erde hervorbringt, also ja, dass man, dass sie Frucht bringen kann. Till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. What do grasshoppers do? This is also the same word as locusts. What do they do? They devour everything. Sie verzehren alles. Everything in their path, right? Alles, was auf ihrem Weg liegt. I just want to, to show you this, right? Ich möchte go, euch das zeigen. Go to Joel, chapter 2. Geht zu Joel 2. I'll show you this very point. This. Ich möchte euch diesen Punkt zeigen. And this is speaking about the northern army. Right. Über die nördliche Armee. Vers 3. Joel 2, Vers 3. It says, A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yet yeah, nothing shall escape them. So what do we see? Was können wir sehen? We're always looking at the things that, are in relation to what we're discussing, what? Is, yeah, it's the Garden of Eden. What's the Garden of Eden? It's a, it's a land of abundance, right? The Garden Eden is a land of fülle. And, and then what does the Garden Eden go to? And so what's the Garden the Garden? Eden? Oh, a wilderness, right? It's a wilderness. So it's in relation to what we've just shown that they're like, they're like these grasshoppers, a locust. They they devour everything in their path. Also right? das ist in Bezug, was wir gerade gezeigt haben, das ist wie diese Heuschrecken, die alles ähm, verzehren, was auf ihrem Weg liegt. Right? So we see the same picture being illustrated. Da können right? wir also dasselbe Bild sehen, was dargestellt wird. But, and this is speaking about the day of the Lord. Und das spricht über den Tag des Herrn. Right? Because it's right at the end where Christ curses the fig tree. Right? Und das ist genau am Ende, wenn Christus den Feigenbaum verflucht. So although he brings an east wind upon them here, it's progressive, right? The east wind's not destroying them here, right? The east wind destroys them at the end, right? That's what this is right here. This is, um, this is the day of the Lord that it's speaking about, right? Darüber spricht es eben auch hier. Es ist der Tag des Herrn. Okay, when Christ curses the fig tree, it's marking the end. Right? Also, when Christ the fig tree cursed, then marked it as end. Okay, so the Lord, remember, he holds back what they want to do right there and gives everybody a chance to turn back to him, right? Denk daran, der Herr hält eben hier das zurück, was sie tun wollten und gives a chance to turn back to him. Also er gibt ihnen eine Möglichkeit, dass sie zu ihm umkehren. So, go to, go to Joel chapter 1. Geht zu Joel 1. Vers 1. Vers 1. It says, The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? 
Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. And Joel is also standing right here. Right? Joel steht auch genau hier. It's given the last warning before it comes, right? Er gibt die letzte Warnung, bevor es kommt. He says, that which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. What's he illustrating? The progressive punishment, how these, these insects who devour everything have, since the you know, turned their heart towards him, slowly but surely it's led down to this point. And now the Lord's given them this last one before they finally destroy them, right? Das ist eben eine progressive Zerstörung und seit sie eben ihre Wurzeln zu Satan gewendet haben, ähm, ja, ist es jetzt ähm, progressiv geschehen und er gibt ihnen jetzt noch eine letzte Warnung, bevor die Bestrafung kommt. Now the book of Joel was also a controversy in the past. People were, some people were saying it was Islam and other people were saying it was the king of the north. Und das Buch Joel, das war auch eine Kontroverse in der Vergangenheit. Manche haben gesagt, es bezieht sich auf den Islam und manche um, auf den König des Nordens. Okay, and you can see why, right? Jetzt kann man sehen, warum. Because it's a not understanding that the east wind has more than one application. Right? Okay, so this is speaking about the threefold union, the northern army, right? Da spricht über die dreifältige Union, die Nordarmee. Okay, and he says in verse 5, Awake ye drunkards and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because the new wine for it is cut off from your mouth. So he's telling them right here that they are to, to weep and howl in this time period. Right? For a nation is come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine, what? Waste, right? And bat my fig tree, he hath made it clean bare, and cast it away, the branches thereof are made white. So you can see there is now a famine, right? Okay, so it's progressive, leading down to this point where it's impossible for them to receive the latter rain, right? Das führt ihn zu diesem Punkt, wo es dann für sie unmöglich ist, den Spätregen zu erhalten. But you can see the Lord's mercy in giving that last warning. Aber right? ihr könnt Gottes Gnade sehen, dass er diese letzte Warnung gibt. Okay, and in Joel 2, in Vers 20. In Joel 2, Vers 20. It says, But I will remove far off from you the northern army. Right, it's the north. Right? Das ist die, eben der Norden. And Vers 23. Vers 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. Okay, so the former rain's been fallen since the beginning, right? Which would have been back here, right? Okay, so he's given it moderately, right? But how do you, when you get to this point, how do you receive that former rain? Okay, if you receive the words of Elijah, right? So if you refuse the words of Elijah, it's a famine, right? But if you receive that manna that comes from heaven, the Lord will sustain you, right? Okay, so it says, He hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, right? Right at this point, right? Come on, you know where we went through this, right? This time period is where the okay. latter rain is falling. Okay, both the former and the latter is falling, right? Okay. It says, and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. So what's he going to do? Restore. And what is the restoring? Another illustration of it. Okay. 
Reparations. Okay, reparations. When? Die Reparaturzahlungen und wann? Just use a story illustrated from the Bible. Okay, when they come out of Egypt with great substance, right? Okay, so he's going to rebuke the devourer. The devourer is Satan, right? Which is Pharaoh. Right? Come on, we're studying line upon line. We've got to bring the stories together. Use the Bible. Right? Okay, so. Uh, it says, And the floor shall be full of wheat, the fat shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, the, my great army which I sent among you. So he says, I will restore to you the what? Ich werde euch was wiederherstellen? The years. Die Jahre. How many years? Wie viele Jahre? Seven years, right? Sieben Jahre. Because this just repeats, right? So this, is, this would be seven years of famine, right? Das wären die sieben Jahre der Hungersnot. So when you come here, come out with great substance, he restores to you all those things that were taken from you, right? Also wenn du hier herauskommst mit großer Habe, da ähm, wiederherstellt, also stellt er das wieder her, was von dir weggenommen wurde. Okay, he said, it's my great army which I sent among you, right? Meine große Armee, die ich unter euch gesendet habe. And he sends it right here. Und er sendet es hier. Okay, it be begins that work, right? Da fängt dieses Werk an. It says, ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. So, when you get here, you're going to eat in plenty, right? Also, wenn du hierher kommst, dann wirst du in Fülle essen. Because it says in verse 24, the floors shall be full of wheat, the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. So there's going to be an abundance again, right? Vers 24 haben wir gelesen, da wird es also wieder eine Fülle geben. Uh, everybody follow. Konnte jeder folgen? Okay. So now go to Jeremiah 18. Gehen wir jetzt zu Jeremia 18. Again, this is a, a prophecy against God's people. Das ist wieder eine Prophetie gegen Gottes Volk. It says, because my people hath forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not cast up. So where have they stumbled from? Von wo sind sie gestolpert? The old paths. Von den alten Pfaden. And where are the old paths given? Und wo werden die alten Pfade gegeben? Or where are they established? Wo werden sie etabliert? At the beginning, right? Am because it says, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way and walk therein, right? Because what do you find? Was, was werdet ihr dann finden? Rest, right? Ruhe. This is where they find, they find rest at the beginning and they have to, the going forth of the virgins, so they have to walk this narrow path, right? Sie finden hier Ruhe am Anfang und das ist wie die Jungfrauen. Sie sollen jetzt auf diesem eng, engen Weg wandeln. But what's his people done? Um, was hat aber Gottes Volk getan? Left. What does it say, verse 15? Was sagt es in Vers 15? They've forgotten him, Sie right? Sie haben Gott vergessen. So this is where they know God and this is where they forget God, right? Also hier um, kennen Sie Gott und hier vergessen Sie Gott. Okay. Vers 16. Vers 16. To make their land desolate. So when they forget God, their land becomes desolate. Right? Also wenn Sie Gott vergessen, wird Ihr Land wüst. And a perpetual hissing, everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. I will scatter them with an east wind. So, verse 16. Where, where does this take place? Vers 16, wo findet das statt? It's the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. Because the, the, the talks mentioned several times in the Bible, the, the people pass by, they wag their heads, right? And they're astonished at what the Lord 
brought upon his people. Also das kann man an mehreren Orten in der Bibel sehen. Also wenn sie, sie gehen vorüber, sie schütteln ihr Kopf und sie sind darüber erstaunt, was der Herr mit seinem Volk getan hat. Okay, and I'll just show you this point. If you go to Leviticus 26, quickly. Diesen Punkt zu zeigen, geht zu Ritter Mose 26. And we'll go to the, the fourth, seventh time, or seven times, which marks the destruction of Jerusalem. Und wir gehen zu dem vierten der sieben Zeiten, was die Zerstörung von Jerusalem markiert. Vers 28. Vers 28. In fact, just let's go to the third seven times, I'll just show you this point, right? Also geht doch zu dritten sieben Zeiten, um diesen Punkt zu zeigen. Vers 25. Vers 25. Vers 25. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. What are they experiencing? Was erfahren sie? A, a famine, right? Verse 27. Verse 27. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me. So you can see it's progressive, right? It's trying to get them to repent. Then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins, and ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughter shall ye eat. Why? Because of the famine, right? Also, wegen der Hungersnot. They're so hungry, they end up eating one another, right? Sie sind so hungrig, dass es damit endet, dass sie einander aufessen. And this took place at the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Und das fand statt bei der Zerstörung von Jerusalem. It says, and I will destroy your high places, cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you, and I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, and I will not smell the savour of your sweet odours. I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Amen? Amen. So he's going to scatter them, right? Okay, so go back to Jeremiah 18 in the notes, verse 16. So because they turn from the old paths and they forget God, verse 16, to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing, everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. So who is it? What's the scattering? Was ist diese Zerstreuung? It's the east wind. Right? Der Ostwind. It's this punishment upon Jerusalem. Das ist die Bestrafung über Jerusalem. And there was a point in this message where we were also confused because who punishes Jerusalem historically? Es gab eben einen Punkt in der Bewegung, wo wir auch verwirrt waren, weil wer hat historisch gesehen Jerusalem bestraft? Babylon and Rome, right? Babylon and Rome. And it was one point where it was sort of brought in that Titus was doing the work of Islam because there was this confusion about the East Wind. Right? I just could never accept that. that, that Rome was suddenly Islam. That was just too, it was just nonsense. Right? Ich konnte das nicht akzeptieren, dass Rom ähm, jetzt plötzlich der Islam ist. Das war einfach nur Unsinn. Okay. So he says, I will, I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their what? Calamity. Right? So if we go to Obadiah, gehen wir zu Obadiah. Right? Which is speaking about Edom. Right? Das spricht über Edom. And Edom is a symbol of the papacy. And right? Edom is a symbol for the papacy. Right? So, which is the northern army. And that right? is the northern army. Okay, Obadiah 1 and verse 10. Obadiah 1 and verse 10. It says, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, because Edom is Esau, right? <coughs> Edom is Esau. So the Lord shown it through the prophetic narrative that Edom murders his brother. 
Right? Der Herr zeigt durch die prophetische Erzählung, dass Edom seinen Bruder umgebracht hat. Do we hear, see another story where one brother murders another brother? Und können wir eine weitere Geschichte sehen, wo ein Bruder seinen Bruder umbringt? Ja. Yes. Yeah. Cain and Abel, okay. right? Cain und Abel. Okay. Also, Ishmael and Isaac, right? Where Ishmael persecutes Isaac, right? Also auch Ismael und Isaac, wo Ismael den Isaac verfolgt. So also illustrate these two brothers. Ich stelle right? mal diese zwei Brüder. Okay, dann. and the opposite brother is the children of the flesh, right? Und der um, entgegengesetzte Bruder ist immer Kinder des Fleisches. Okay, so it says for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captives his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was, wast as one of them. So it's marking when Jerusalem is being conquered, right? It's marked when Jerusalem is Okay, it's the scattering, right? But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their, what? Calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. So what's the day of calamity? The destruction of Jerusalem, right? And it says it's going to be done by an east wind. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. So, the east wind here is punishing Jerusalem, right? So the Lord says, as has been done to you, so will, as you've done unto them, so will be done unto you, right? Sagt, so, wie du es ihnen angetan hast, so wird es dir angetan werden. So who's going to punish them? Also wer wird sie bestrafen? The east wind. Der Ostwind. Right? But it's a different entity, right? Das ist eine andere Macht. But they're both the day of the Lord, Aber right? Aber es ist beides der Tag des Herrn. This is this point, right? As soon as the northern army punishes Jerusalem, what happens to the northern army? Das ist dieser Punkt, sobald die Nordarmee Jerusalem bestraft, was geschieht mit der Nordarmee? What happens with Gog as soon as he's finished his work? Was geschieht mit Gog, sobald er sein Werk vollendet hat? He gets all punished, right? Er wird bestraft. Okay, and it's both represented by the east wind. And das wird beides dargestellt durch den Ostwind. Okay, um, so go to Ezekiel 19. It doesn't mention the east wind in Obadiah. We're just bringing line upon line together. Obadiah is the northern army, right? So Nabatia erwähnt das nicht in Ostwind, aber Linie auf Linie bringen wir das zusammen und das ist eben die Nordarmee. It says in verse 15, then as you've done to them, they're going to do, it's going to be done unto you. Vers 15 sagt es, so wie du es ihnen angetan hast, so wird es dir angetan. Wird. So, they're the east wind punishing Jerusalem. Sie sind der Ostwind, der Jerusalem bestraft. Right, we know that the east wind, we'll go through this tomorrow, we'll bring all the verses together to show that the east wind then punishes Babylon. Right? Wir ähm, werden morgen auch diese ganzen Verse zusammenbringen, wo es zeigt, dass der Ostwind dann Babylon bestraft. Okay. So, Ezekiel 19, verse 1. Gehen wir zu Ezekiel 19 und Vers 1. It says, Moreover, take thou up a lamentation for the princes of Israel. So this is a prophecy against Israel. Das ist eine Prophetie gegen Israel. And say, what is thy mother, a lioness? She lay down among lions. She nourished her whelps among young lions. And she brought up one of her whelps, It became a young lion, and it learned to catch the prey. It devoured men. The nations also 
heard of him, he was taken in their pit, and they brought him with chains into the land of Egypt. Okay, and this is, I think this, uh, I could be wrong, but I think it's speaking about um, Jehoahaz, Je Je yes, thank you. Also, ich glaube, das spricht über Jehoahaz. Yes, and, and then it shows you the same thing again, verse 5. Also, es zeigt uns dasselbe nochmal in Vers 5. Now, when she saw that she had waited and her hope was lost, then she took another of her whelps and made him a young lion. And he went up and down among the lions. He became a young lion and learned to catch the prey and devoured men. S same illustration. Right? And he knew their desolate palaces and he laid waste their cities and the land was desolate and the fullness thereof by the noise of his roaring. So this is speaking about Zedekiah. Then the nations set against him on every side from the provinces and spread their net over him. He was taken in their pit and they put him inward in chains and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him into holds that his voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of Israel. Thy mother is like a vine in thy blood planted by the waters. She was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters. So where's verse 10 referring to? When it was planted at the beginning, right? Okay, it's just using different historical illustrations to show the same illustration. Right? Okay. And she had strong rods for the scepters of them that bear rule, and her stature was exalted among the thick branches, and she appeared in her height with the multitude of her branches, right? So this is when you're set up as a great tree at the end, right? That's what we read at the end of Ezekiel 17, become this great tree that everybody shelters under. Verse 12. But she was plucked up in fury. That's the destruction of Jerusalem. Das ist dann die Zerstörung she was cast down to the ground and the east wind dried up her fruit. Amen? Amen. Her strong rods were broken and withered, the fire consumed them. And now she is planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty ground. And fire has gone out of a rod of her branches which hath devoured her fruit so that she hath no strong rod to be a scepter to rule. This is a lamentation and shall be for a lamentation. Amen? So you can see very clearly that the east wind represents the work of destruction by Rome upon Jerusalem. Da können wir ganz klar sehen, dass der Ostwind das Werk der Zerstörung durch Rom ähm, auf Jerusalem darstellt. Okay, go to Hosea chapter 12. Gehen wir zu Hosea 12. Vers 1. Vers 1. It says, Ephraim feedeth on wind, and followeth after the east wind. So who's Ephraim going after? Also nach wem geht Ephraim nach? Right. Yes, it's going after the east wind, right? But um, where, where else do we see this? Er geht dem Ostwind nach, und wo noch können wir das sehen? Go to, is it... Yes, yes, go to Ezekiel 23. Always trying to use the Bible to illustrate things. Right? Verse 4. It says, The names of them were Ahola the elder and Aholiba her sister. And they were mine, and they bear sons and daughters. Thus were the names. Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem Aholiba. So Samaria is also Ephraim, right? So Samaria is auch um, Ephraim. So Ephraim here in, in Hosea is going after the east wind. Also right? Ephraim here in, in Hosea geht nach dem, Ost, dem Ostwind. Nach. So let's see what Ahola does in verse 5. Mm. Und schauen wir uns jetzt an, was Ahola in Vers 5 tut. 
And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine, and she doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors. Who is she going after? Wem geht sie nach? The Assyrians, right? Den Assyrians. Which were clothed with blue captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding upon horses. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all them that were the chosen men of Assyria, and with all on whom she doted, with all their idols, she defiled herself. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt, for in her youth they lay with her, and they bruised the breasts of her virginity and poured their whoredoms upon her. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers. Right? So in Hosea, who's God's people going after? And in Hosea, wem geht Gott's Volk nach? Let's read the whole thing now, right? Ephraim feedeth on wind and follow after the east wind. He daily increaseth lies and desolation. They do make a covenant with whom? The Assyrians. And oil is carried into Egypt, right? Same illustration. Right? They're going after because they're, they're feeding them this, this wind. Right? So when, when Daniel and his colleagues are taken into captivity in the Sunday law, do they try to feed them something? Wenn Daniel und seine Freunde in die Gefangenschaft am Sonntagsgesetz gebracht werden, versuchen sie dort auch ihnen etwas zu speisen. Ja, yeah, they try to feed them the Babylonian food, right? Sie versuchen eben, dass sie dieses babylonische Essen. And if you if you eat that, you're going to be destroyed, right? Und wenn du das isst, dann wirst du zerstört werden. You got to eat the manna that Elijah is bring it to you from heaven, right? Du musst das Manna essen, was Elia vom Himmel für dich herunterbringt. Okay. That's every wind of doctrine. Right? Yes, every, every wind of doctrine, right? So wind is a doctor. Right? Also es, es sagt ja auch, jeder Wind der Lehre, also Wind ist eine Lehre. Right, so go to Habakkuk chapter 1. Gehen wir zu Habakkuk 1. Vers 5. Vers 5. It says, Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. Chaldeans is the northern army, right? That bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. And they shall gather the captivity as the sand. So again, you see the northern army likened to the east wind, right? Wieder kann man sehen, wie die Nordarmee mit dem Ostwind verglichen wird. Okay, go to Job, chapter 27. Geht zu Hiob 27. And verse 6. And verse 6. It says, My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul? Will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God, and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. So in verse 13, Job's about to explain to them what's going to come upon those that oppress others. Right? In verse 13, David here jetzt erklären, was über diejenigen kommen wird, die andere unterdrücken. And who is he speaking to? Zu wem spricht er? His three friends. Zu seinen right? drei Freunden. Okay. 
internally it's like an illustration of the external threefold union. Und right? intern ist das hier eine Darstellung um, für das, diese externe dreifältige Union. Okay, but this is, he's now speaking about his people right here. Und hier spricht es aber über sein Volk. It says, if his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. What will he not be? Was wird er nicht sein? Won't get enough bread, right? Wird nicht genug Brot There'll be a famine. Da right? eine Hungersnot geben. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. He buildeth his house, his house as a moth, and as a booth that the keeper maketh. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carrieth him away, and he departeth, as a storm hurleth him out of his place. So what is the east wind? Was ist der Ostwind? It's the tempest, it's the storm, right? Es ist der dieser Sturm. Okay. For God shall cast upon him and not spare, he would fain flee out of his hand. So first it comes upon Jerusalem, then it comes upon Babylon, right? Zuerst kommt es also auf Jerusalem und dann auf Babylon. So but Babylon is the one that's punishing God's people, so it's not Babylon that's punishing themselves. It's, the, it's a different entity. Also Babylon ist ähm, diejenigen, die Gottes Volk bestraft und Babylon bestraft sich ja dann nicht selbst, sondern es ist dann eine andere Macht. Okay, so let's close now by going to Hosea chapter 13. Ähm, schließen wir jetzt ab, indem wir zu Hosea 13 gehen. In Vers 1. It says, when Ephraim speak trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more, and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding, all of it the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Therefore they shall be as the morning cloud, and as the early dew that passeth away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor as the smoke out of the chimney. So the Lord's going to bring a, a whirlwind against them, right? Also the Herr wird einen Wirbelsturm gegen sie bringen. Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Saviour beside me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pastures, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore, have they forgotten me? Therefore I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard by the way will I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps, and will rend the call of their heart. And there will I devour them like a lion, the wild beast shall tear them. So how is he going to come against them? Wie wird er gegen sie kommen? Yeah, so how is he coming against them? The threefold three union, union, right? Um, it's this 1260, right? It's this time of famine, right? The dreifältige Union, also es ist diese 1260, die Zeit der Hungersnot. Verse 9. Verse 9. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? and thy judges, of whom thou saidst, Give me a king and princes. I gave thee a king in mine anger, and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up, his sin is hid. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. And the sorrows are marked in Matthew 24. Right? The northern armies, this period of progressive destruction. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. 
I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues, O grave. I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. The wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up. He shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword, their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their woman with child shall be ripped up. Where do we see that illustrated? Okay. Verse 16. In Ezekiel 9. In Ezekiel 9. In Ezekiel 9 is the destruction of Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Okay, so tomorrow we'll look at how what Babylon does to God's people, the same is going to come upon them, right? So morgen werden wir sehen, was Babylon Gottes Volk antut, dasselbe wird über sie kommen. So you see very clearly that the east wind is God's wrath. It's when he brings his punishment upon these uh, two entities in the day of the Lord. Also da können wir sehen, dass der Ostwind im Gottes Zorn ist. Es ist die Bestrafung, die er am Tag des Herrn über diese zwei ähm, Mächte bringt. Okay, and hopefully this will remove a lot of confusion on this topic. Und hoffentlich wird das viel Verwirrung über dieses Thema ähm, wecken. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's close. Okay. Lass es mal für dich abschließen. Thank you for this morning study. Danke für dieses Morgenstudium. Thank you for this new clarification. Danke für diese ähm, neuen ähm, Klarheiten. And, uh, help us to see all these truths. Und bitte hilf uns all diese Wahrheiten zu sehen. And uh, I also ask you that you will help us during this day to meditate upon the, the truth. Und ich möchte dich bitten, dass du uns hilfst an diesem Tag über deine Wahrheit nachzudenken. That we will have a dass wir einen gesegneten Tag haben mögen und in den Versuchungen gestärkt werden. Bitte ähm, fahre fort, diese Bewegung zu sehen und erkläre uns mehr von diesen geheimen Dingen. Ich danke dir in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.